I have a small F-82R trimaran that I use for day sailing, weekend regattas, and boat camping. It has a small outboard for motoring in and out of the harbour, which is far easier to maintain than the complex inboards of these larger boats around us and is really all we need. My electrical needs are simple too. I have sailing instruments, a GPS, some lights, a radio, and the need to charge our mobile devices. What I really need is the small outboard of the electrical world, and I think I've found just the thing with the Bluetti EV3A. I'm going to tell you all about it, but first, let me tell you how I got here. This was my old boat. It was much bigger and much more complicated. It had a diesel inboard and a complex electrical system that looks something like this. Yes, I know you probably can't see or understand the diagram, but that's exactly the point. One of the reasons I sold this boat was because I was tired of looking after all the complex systems. My new boat is much smaller and much simpler, and I love being free of all that complexity so I can enjoy the thrill of sailing without a complex maintenance burden. When I bought this boat, it came with the same kind of battery as millions of cars, boats, and RVs before it, a lead-acid battery. These have been the mainstay of the battery industry for decades, and for many years that's all there was. But it was, quite literally, a black box in every way. In our first long sailing regatta in this boat, we were on the water for just under 48 hours without stopping. On the second day, we were getting quite concerned about how much battery power we had left because we had no good way of knowing with that lead-acid battery. We didn't know how much energy was going in from our solar panels, we didn't know how much we were using, nor the state of charge. It's just not a place you want to be. Plus, a Group 24 lead-acid battery is pretty heavy, with most of them weighing 50 to 60 pounds or 20 to 25 kilograms, so I also wanted something lighter. So I replaced it with a lithium iron phosphate battery. This was much better as it weighed half as much, had twice as much usable capacity, plus it had a battery management system, or BMS, that could tell us how much power was going in, coming out, and the state of charge, so we knew exactly how much power we had left. I loved the performance of the lithium iron phosphate battery, but I still only had a single 12 volt receptacle for charging my devices. Plus, I had this huge charge controller, and my system was starting to look like this again, which I definitely didn't want. So I started shopping again. At around the same time, we had a major windstorm that knocked down some huge trees, and our power was out for a couple of days. So I bought a Bluetti AC50S portable power station to charge my phone and power my internet router. I was really happy with this device, so I decided to try it as a power supply for my boat as well. I figured, why not? Because it uses the same lithium iron phosphate batteries I was using before, and it only weighed 13 pounds, or about 5 kilos, or about one quarter of the original lead acid battery, and it was really convenient to carry back and forth between my house and my boat. I was planning a video on this when Bluetti offered to send their newer EB3A for me to test out. The EB3A is great because it's got lots of inputs and outputs, and it only weighs 10 pounds, or 4.6 kilos, and has about the same usable capacity as a Group U1 lead acid battery, which weighs about three times as much. I race my boat, so I'm always looking for the smallest, lightest, self-contained power solution, like my small outboard. Bluetti does make much larger self-contained power stations that can be connected together, so be sure to check out their website if you need more power than I'm about to show you. For me, one of the best parts about the EB3A is the display. It shows you exactly how much power is going in, how much power is coming out, how much charge you have left, and how long you can keep doing what you're doing before you run out of power. Here, I have a laptop plugged in and charging via USB-C, which is currently drawing 34 watts, which I can keep doing for 5.1 hours with 73% charge, but of course my laptop will be full long before that. We're only drawing 34 watts at the moment, but the EB3A USB-C can charge it up to 100 watts. There's also an inductive charging pad on top, so you can simply lay your phone on it and it will charge it up to 15 watts, assuming your phone supports inductive charging. Here I'm charging a laptop via USB-C, two iPads via USB-A, and drawing a total of 53 watts, which is all these devices can accept at the moment because they're almost fully charged. But the EB3A could keep doing this for another 2.9 hours at 63% charge. I love that display. I plug my boat into the EB3A via the 12 volt cigarette lighter port, which supports up to 10 amps, and is more than enough for my boat, which normally draws less than 2 amps. Right underneath that, there are two DC5521 ports, which can also support up to 10 amps between the two of them, and the EB3A supports all outputs being used at the same time. There's even a light on the front, which saves you the time and effort of installing and maintaining separate lights on the inside of your boat if you're a true minimalist like I am. The light has two brightness settings, 
plus a flashing mode which signals SOS and Morse code. This is the kind of thing you hope to never need as a voter, but it's something you really want in the event of an emergency. For AC output, there's a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter that can burst at up to 1200 watts. This is enough to power small tools, like an angle grinder or random orbit sander. Here the angle grinder is running under no load at 300 watts, which it could continue to do for another half an hour at 61% charge. Once I actually start grinding or sanding, that will go down. It's not enough to rebuild your boat, but it's certainly enough for small emergency repair jobs. Let's see how the EB3A holds up when we try to cut this piece of half inch or 12 millimeter steel. I'm using a grinding wheel instead of a cutting wheel, which is less than ideal, but it should be a good test. You can see the load building as I start to grind. I can sustain 600 watts and burst above momentarily, but if I stay above 600 watts, I'll get an overload error. There, I just got one. Just turn the inverter off and back on again to reset. Now I'll try more of a pulsing motion instead. This will take longer, but avoid tripping the overload. As I said before, a cutting wheel would have been far more efficient because it's thinner. I still think this is pretty cool for a box that only weighs 10 pounds. When the EB3A runs low on juice, there are six ways to charge it up. The easiest way is to use the included AC power cord and an AC outlet with the built-in 268 watt charger which will take you from 10 to 90% charge in about an hour. Here, we're charging at 265 watts, and the display tells us it will take another third of an hour, or about 20 minutes, to fully charge from 61%. Like all batteries, the charge rate slows as the battery fills. The EB3A also comes with a solar charging cable, which allows you to use the built-in solar charge controller with up to 200 watts of solar input. We had a rare glimpse of winter sunshine that enabled me to test the solar charging capabilities. Here, I'm getting 70 watts of input from a 100 watt panel, with the sun solo on the horizon I had to prop the panel up to almost vertical. The best I've ever gotten out of this panel on my AC50S is 85 watts in the middle of summer, so I consider this to be pretty good. There's also an optional 12 volt car charging cable, which isn't included with the EB3A, but can be bought separately. This one came with my Blue Eddy AC50S, so I'm thankful I already have one, however, I wish they had included it with the EB3A. Here, I'm plugged into a relatively weak lead-acid battery, which is charging the EB3A at 36 watts, which will take another 2.9 hours to charge from 62%. Like the outputs, you can also combine charging methods and use the AC and DC chargers at the same time. Here, we're getting 285 watts combined from our AC charger and weak lead-acid battery, but with 268 watts of AC and up to 200 watts of solar, the EB3A can accept up to 468 watts, which will get you from a 10 to 90% charge in about 30 minutes. The EB3A has a 268 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which is enough capacity to charge these common items several times or run them for a few hours as shown. This is about the same usable capacity as a Group U1 lead acid battery or about 25 amp hours at 12 volts. Bluetti measures the output in watt hours because all the outputs have different voltages, so amp hours would be meaningless. The EB3A is one of Bluetti's smallest units, which, like I said earlier, is exactly what I need for my lightweight day sailor. But as I also mentioned, you can get larger units and connect them together to meet pretty much any power requirements. With only 10 amps of DC output in a single connector, the EB3A doesn't provide enough power to start an outboard. But if I needed to do that, I would just get a small Group U1 lead acid starting battery and use the EB3A for my house loads and charge it through the 12 volt input from the alternator output. Before we wrap up, there's one more really cool feature of the EB3A that I want to tell you about. Remember that storm that knocked out our power and caused me to buy a Blue Eddy portable power station in the first place? Well, when it knocked out my power, it also knocked out my internet. And the EB3A has a solution for that too, with its UPS mode. You can plug your computer equipment into the AC outputs, and as long as the EB3A has AC power flowing to its inputs, it will just bypass the battery altogether and power your gear straight from the wall. But when the power goes out, the battery and inverter in the EB3A will take over and keep your computer equipment running. I love the EB3A because it contains all of this complexity in a lightweight, portable package that only costs a fraction of what this all costs. And it lets me spend less time working on my boat and more time sailing, which is really how I'd much rather be spending my time. Plus, I know exactly what my batteries are doing, and if it breaks, I can easily swap it out with another one. And because it's portable, I can easily move it between boats and use it in my truck camper too. If you're interested in getting yourself a Blue Eddy EB3A, 
Click on the link in the description below to get yourself a bit of a discount and help out my channel. And if you found this video useful, leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel, and watch this next video.